Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Heidi. Hello. Hello, Christian. Thanks for having it's, me. It's good to see you again. Of course, I've already seen you this year, so I feel spoiled. It's like we, I know. We see each yeah. Other more more than a couple times a year now. But uh, so for folks, Heidi, that don't know you, who are you? Where are you? And what do you do? Sure. So my name is Heidi Jordan. Um, I am a senior modern workplace consultant with Avanad, and I am out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So. I like to tell people there's not a lot of us in this area, you know, it's pretty lonely. So it's fun to have the tech community, you know, to gravitate towards and um, see at events and whatnot. So. Well, it's like, yeah, like where you are, I mean, this, this time of year, you basically just, uh, you, you make sure you have plenty of supplies and uh, yeah, <laughs> fill up the bathtub as Liz Sundet said in a tweet a couple weeks ago, you know, we get these big blizzards and you just load up on some food and turn on Netflix and, you know, just hang out. <laughs> It's beautiful. I've often said for folks that don't uh, haven't been out to that part of the world. I mean, I I love uh, driven through you know a dozen times or more South Dakota. I love the Black Hills. Uh, Rushmore is my favorite national monument. It's just I, it's just fantastic area out there. And I've often said it's like I like I love uh, more rural settings. And having lived in the Sierra Nevada as part of my teenage years, I just I, it has that same vibe. Uh, for those that know, like Placerville, South Lake Tahoe, like in the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas, the Black Hills has the same vibe as that. It's like I could live over there. Mm -hmm. Yep. See, I'm actually from Minnesota, so I never, I rarely make it out to the Black Hills. Even I've lived in South Dakota now for um, probably 15 years, but I've only been out to the Black Hills like maybe once or twice. So ah. I'm actually a Minnesota Lake Country girl. So. That's I well, it's beautiful out there too. That's mm -hmm. what I drove out there uh, two summers ago. So I think COVID going and the dog and I took a road trip and <laughs> visited my daughter. And uh, like every town you roll through, especially I cut across from South Dakota and, and didn't take the major highways, you know, it, you know, straight up. I kind of zigzagged through, like stopped through all the little towns and stuff. And every time I'm just like, wow, I could live here. This is beautiful. This is fantastic. But then I yep. remember the winters. Oh gosh, I know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you got to come back in the summer sometime. I feel like I I, when you were here a couple weeks ago, it was winter and that just wasn't fair. Yeah, I've been so. out there again. My, do <laughs> my daughter's there uh, just up north of Minneapolis. And it's, uh, I mean, yeah, walking along the river and the parks and summers are gorgeous in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, for sure. So I always like to ask that, that question, the origin story question. So you as a relatively new MVP, so still fresh in your mind. What <laughs> yes, was the is. what was your path to becoming the MVP? What was that like for you? Yeah, um, it was actually a really quick one. Um, I really think we, we just kind of started those conversations like last year with my mentor, um, kind of going on that track. And you know, she kind of said it. This isn't really something you seek; it just comes to you. You know, so just really be active with the community. Just keep doing what you're doing. Be an advocate. Be a driving positive force for Microsoft, and then things are just going to happen. So that's really what I went into with that mindset. Well, plus you just started it out by saying that you had a mentor and that's something that look at. And so I'm part of like Microsoft for startups programs. I've always had a uh, you know, formal mentorship relationships at different companies that it was with and inside and outside like career mentors that were not part of my company. And, uh, you know, so uh, what are your suggestions there for people that don't have a mentor? I think that you just got to find someone that you gravitate towards, um, whether that's like on social media or at conferences or something, just find a person that you're a lot alike. So like, I will call out Liz Sundet. I'll, I'll mention her all day. She's the best. So yeah. she, I had met her at a conference or at a SharePoint Saturday and she was a, um, she was into marching band as, and so was I in college. So that just that kind of cool fact, like made me gravitate towards her. And I really liked her delivery. And, you know, I just kind of reached out and said, Hey, you know, would you mind being my mentor? So I think, again, just find someone that you're kind of close to find someone in the community, uh, find someone that may be the same technology parallel that you're in, or, you know, and just, um, they, they will most likely say yes. You know, people in this tech community love to help others. That's kind of what binds us all together. So more than likely someone will be willing to help you out. Well, the, the, I have to say though, the problem I have with, uh, with Liz is that like, she just doesn't get sarcasm. 
right yeah, <laughs> yeah so, she's not that way at all yeah, I, know, I know it's uh i've got a real problem with that i tell her that all the time to her face i'm, I'm not shy there no. No, liz is awesome so uh, hashtag not Tracy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. She's also very dangerous with the crochet needles. So don't get on her bad side. Oh yeah. No, she I know. can yeah. whip up those blankets left and right. So, yep. <laughs> well, so, so what are you focused on now? So business applications, MVP for like, so what is your focus there with business apps? Sure. Um, I think Power Platform is really my, you know, but more as, you know, there's many components to Power Platform, but um, I kind of gravitate towards the Power Apps and uh, Power Automate, um, the I really got my start building solutions using InfoPath and SharePoint Designer. Yep. So really that whole, um, how do we actually make this work for our business? That's kind of where I gravitate towards helping people actually put those into play in their businesses and understanding those tools and really the evangelization, evangelization side of it, you know, um, that this, this can work for you and here's how. Where do organizations mainly struggle with Power Platform? Is it like on the governance side or is that, because so I keep hearing that, pop up and of course my you know new company rencore we've got a solution there's other solution providers that are doing things i was just on a pgi call so an mvp call so the nda can't talk about what we talked about mm -hmm. but was kind of focused on aspects of governance of power platform but what what are some of the things that companies struggle with as they're starting up sure i think that it, you know it's really we're kind of going through a phase now so the initial phase was oh no infopath is dead you know and now what are we going to do so then everyone was kind of scrambling to see what the next solution was and so then they started to look into the power platform so it was really that phase was how do we get started how do we remediate these infopath forms do we need to go to other tools you know just really a discovery phase of mm -hmm. trying to see what was out there with the next offering for microsoft you know and now i think that the solutions are out there um hopefully I, unfortunately a lot of businesses are saying the wild west you know these solutions everywhere yeah and there and, are a lot of because know. a lot of third-party solutions popped up in the meantime as well and uh, and uh, while I, look I, I don't focus on that area but you don't hear about any one solution out there because power platform the community side is just really taken off but mm -hmm. yep you know and again the, the wild west like the all these things and now how do we actually get a handle on that i think that the the citizen developers and it are kind of coming together in the middle and they need to figure out a way to actually govern it and that's why the whole governance thing is really popular right now you know the the coe toolkit is a big thing um which i think if you haven't heard of that you know that's the the it's you can download it and it's um a way to you know how many apps do i have out there what are you know what's our utilization how are people actually adopting this platform and it gives you those statistics right out of the box yeah. so i think that's um kind of a hot topic right now with governance that's actually another area i mean just the whole concept of having a center of excellence i love that microsoft came out early with that and and promoted that out there it's free go and and check it out there's a lot that's been written on that that topic but i I mean, I really look at that as Microsoft learned from past tool deployments, other, other platforms, and waiting until late stage to develop some of that, those best practices and provide that that guidance. And so it's great that they did that. So that's mm -hmm. always a recommendation. If you, you don't know where to start with that, make sure that you go and take a look at the, the reading materials. And there's a way that you can kind of baby step your way into leveraging the COE to keep, you know, at least start down the path of having some semblance of governance in place of what's being built within your organization. For sure. And you can really put it in at any point, you know, you could do it at the beginning, right. you can do it yeah. at the end, like it, any part of your journey. It's nice that it helps at any phase um, to give some insight, but it really isn't like the end all be all though. You know, it's not the stopping point. Like once you have this installed, like that's not it. You need to know what to do with that. You know, and that's really where people are trying to take the next steps now. And what do we do with this? Like, um, once the PAR platform takes off, you're going to need staff. You're going to need people that know how to support these tickets that are coming in and uh, really keep the platform, you know, keep that um, under control. <laughs> well, so. and, and there's there's the life cycle of the solutions as well. So, I mean, you can see that you can see the data, but you still didn't have to go take action, make decisions on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you're, you're seeing people that are now uh, seeing more and more. And this is a, sorry, this kind of a pet peeve uh, early in the, uh, in, when Teams was first rolled out. There's a lot of us, the MVP community that we're pushing to Microsoft and saying, hey, the multi-tenancy issue, it's a major issue. It's a huge gap. And they're like, well, you guys are special case. It's a small number of scenarios where that that's the case. And it's become this mainstreamed uh, you know, problem that's out there. 
And larger organizations in the power platform have this issue where they're looking at, well, how do we transport? How do we move you know, the life cycle of the solutions? How do we extend this to other parts? If we acquire a company, if we have multi-tenants within a single organization, much less through M&A, we acquire other companies or merge companies and bring them together. And how do we share these things? That's becoming a more and more common scenario. And you know, it's not just power platform, it's across, it's a Microsoft 365 issue. Um, but it's, again, Microsoft is starting to recognize, you know, hey, these MVPs that voiced this concern early on, like this is a, yeah, we need to solve these problems. Mm -hmm. Yep. I do feel like we're entering the, you know, in 2020, it was the whole, like the rush to teams and the hybrid workplace and all that. And I feel like things have settled down a little bit from that. And now we're really able to refocus and start working on some of these issues you know, and really uh, growing the technology and um, seeing all the things that are coming out with Viva. And, you know, it's just fun to see how we're really broadening our horizons now and getting back to our, our focus on the, the tools. I always, I always say this like about sprawl in general is that, you know, sprawl, it, it's messy. It's the wild west. There's the cleanup, all those kinds of things, but it's also an indication that people are using the technology. And when people use it, then that kind of begets it it's it, it it forces organizations to go on okay let's look at uh the the governance process look at the life cycle of the let's look at the content that's being used is it being done in the right way do we need to mature take kind of a you know a, a cmm you know maturity model uh, approach to these solutions and and so yeah, it's rare that you find a company that is early in the phase that says, hey, we're going to go and adopt these things. Let's go back and look at best practices and see the right way to do these things. No, they jump <laughs> with both feet in, mess things up, and then they go clean up things later. So mm -hmm. I think that's the vast majority. It's a, it's a rare instance where somebody wants to go and put all of that in place up front before people are starting building things. Oh yeah. I've never come across any company that has done that, you know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> so. it, it's one of those, there's somebody will claim that and then you dig into the story of what they were actually doing. And it, <laughs> it's usually it's because they're new to Microsoft stack or power platform, but they had a long history of all the mistakes on some other technology stack. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think this drives home the importance of like internal user groups too. I think that oh, yeah. just sharing that message, I, you know, is people are more likely to listen to each other, coworkers than IT yeah. telling them what to do. Um, so I think that it, the power of an internal user group just to do that show and tell and, you know, maybe people are focused on their own lines of businesses and their departments and they're really focusing on those pieces of the platform and the tools that work for their department. I think it's so powerful. Um, and I highly encourage any business to get that going and, um, you know, keep maintaining that and let users share with each other. Even if there's, I would say, because I've had this, I'm sure you've had similar experience. Like even if there's just two of you sitting at lunch, having conversations about that. And a lot of user groups, internal user groups might start that way, two or three people getting together. But I, man, I remember doing this and consistently meeting together and it got bigger. There were, uh, you know, at, at the end, there were, you know, consistent participation monthly, 12 to 15 people, sometimes a lot larger than that. Um, but just the sharing of, you know, hey, take a look at this. I found this thing. Were you aware of that? Oh, hey, yeah, I built something similar, but I didn't see that. And kind of th th those conversations internally where you have that shared interest about the success of the company, it's it's really powerful. It's it You get a lot of help sometimes that's unlooked for in improving the quality of the solutions that you build. Mm -hmm. These are the people that are using it every day. You know, those are the people you want to talk to. And those are the people you want talking to each other, really. Right. No, I, I, it's a, uh, look, I, I talked about, written a lot about community building, but it, it's, uh, it, you just need to be consistent. You need to be, um, you know, willing to to be that driver, to, to be the one that's always showing up, that's there every time. And, uh, you know, don't get caught up in the, 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 the fact that, Hey, there aren't 30, 40, 50 people at this meeting as a, a, a measurement of success. Again, two or three people getting together can help each other and you get value out of, out of that. Absolutely. That's one thing that Liz, again, Liz, shout out to Liz, <laughs> uh, you know, has said about my 
when you present at conferences, you know, as long as you reach one person in that room, like you did your job, you know, it doesn't matter how many people are in the room. <laughs> well, I always say that. So I started my uh, on stage career. I was the lead singer of an alternative rock band in the early nineties. And I would always say that and I'm not a, especially a shy person anyway, but I tell you it, it, um, occasionally we played a gig where it was us maybe one person sometimes they'd walk back to the bar good to drink and there'd be nobody there and we just like look at each other and we're like hey it's another practice like we're getting value out of this and, and being here um but uh yeah it, it's uh, a user group of one not useful but again minimum of two people you know that's all you need it's all you need so what I heard from that is that you're going to do karaoke at the next no, conference a, or something. No, not a fan of karaoke. <laughs> oh. We always did all original music. So yeah. Gotcha. But, <laughs> yeah. Well, good times. Well, what's, so what are your kind of the, your big uh, topics that you're focusing on? What are you writing and speaking on right now? Sure. Yeah. I'm working on for the next conference. I'll be in Las Vegas uh, in May. Um, I am doing a new session on Power Automate and um, six kind of tips to keep your business flowing. So what I'm doing with that is there are in the field, I've worked with, you know, building these solutions with Power Apps and Power Automate. There are some concepts that are seemingly easy for, you know, but actually aren't in the long run. So I'm trying to um, just oversimplify those concepts, things like assign a task to a group, you know, some of those like key things that are actually big parts of your solutions and just kind of going over those and um, showing users how to do those. Yep. So that's one of my sessions. And then the other one, I'm going to do my Power Apps tips for, from, from a first-time user, where I tell my story of how I actually got started with Power Apps, um, coming from a um, InfoPath background. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it took me nine months to build my first form. Like, I will be very clear and transparent about that. Like, this is not an easy tool to adopt. Um, so I like to point out some of those things that I struggled with in the beginning and um, just point those out so users can go and just get started on their journey with you know a little more smoothly than I did. And I have to ask this question, are you still supporting any InfoPath solutions out there or are you completely recovered? I, I am me personally no. I am loving helping people remediate their InfoPath forms though in my current position. So um Yes, that, that's actually one of my favorite projects to work on right now is getting rid of like, those info paths. So. I would like to share that. Uh, so in the, uh, so this is back before the Y2K thing. So in the nineties, uh, so I went to work, I was working for EDS. They tried to recruit me to become a COBOL engineer. And, and the reason I didn't do it was because they wanted to send me down to Texas. I was in Northern California uh, for a couple months and I was newly married and without my wife and my daughter. And I'm like, mm -hmm. No, um, no. Uh, so, uh, you know, that, that was the big decision. Of course, I knew a couple of people that were in that, that program and continued to be COBOL uh, programmers that made uh, bank on Y2K. And after that, in, in financial systems, you know, it, it, there's st it's still a thing that's out there. But, um, and I'm sure there are still COBOL programs out there. There's not many of them. So they make a lot of money. And mm -hmm. so I like uh, to, I, I don't want to, uh, 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 you know, if there's anybody that's out there that's still working on a supporting InfoPath, I think that your, uh, your, your, what you can be paid to do that for those organizations that are holding on to those pieces, um, you can probably demand a pretty penny, but. Exactly. Yep. But, Same goes for SharePoint designer, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yep. There you go. The other side of the coin there. It was very cool. Well, Heidi, really appreciate your, your time and jumping on this, this call get, letting people get to know you the yeah. folks that want to connect with you what are the best ways to find you out in social where are you most active um twitter or linkedin i'm open for both of those so yeah thank you I for always having say, me. Don't, don't be shy reach out to heidi she's <laughs> she's friendly that's right yes for well, sure thanks a lot and i will see you in vegas in may that sounds good thanks for having me <laughs>